let them talk if they want to. And welcome to Let Them Talk. I'm Paul DiRienzo. We have a great show in store for you. Alan Goodman, welcome Thank to Let Them Talk. Glad Good to have to you here. on. From Revolution Books, he's a writer for uh, Revolution Newspaper, revcom.us, right? Thank you. And we'll plug that. You can say that as many times as you want. We'll make sure people Thanks. know where to go for more information. And uh, we've had a, a few people on from uh, Revolution Books and from uh, from the Revolution Worker over the years, and uh, uh, always interested in a fresh look at things because. Um, uh, we're looking at a situation, Ukraine, a map of Ukraine's mm -hmm. behind us, where it can be confusing, right? Because, uh, you know, Nazis, you know, people who claimed they were Nazis or it was claimed that they were Nazis. Mm -hmm. I mean, can you use that word? I mean, that word is thrown around. What does it mean anymore? But, you know, extreme nationalists, dangerous anti-Semitic people marched into the city hall at Kiev, and allegedly part of this uh, change of government that occurred in Ukraine. Uh, it makes it sort of your knee-jerk reaction might be to say maybe the Russians are doing the right thing going in there. You know, they're putting out a fire before we saw the last time a fire went out when uh, it caught on in the Ukraine and you know, destruction and things happened back in those days. So yet uh, uh, you can't like Putin. I mean, you know, I saw, you know, a video of a, of a Russian cop, a Cossack they called him, whipping, you know, one of my heroes from Pussy Riot. Right. So uh, I don't like Putin. Personally, I don't like what his government has been doing to people who I do like. And yet, the Ukraine seems to be falling into a, uh, into a pit. Mm -hmm. What's well, it happening? it's a very dangerous situation. And you and, and your listeners may be inclined to say, given your understanding of the history of the United States, the legacy of forces that it declares to be democratic uh, grassroots forces, which is essentially anybody who serves the interests of the United States. Um, and given your understanding that when the United States talks about, we can't let anybody interfere with the territorial integrity of another country. You know, those of us who lived through Vietnam, the Gulf of Tonkin incident, uh, we have, a, Senate, we have a, a postable graphic up at Revcom and in the print edition of Revolution of Remember the Maine, which uh -huh. was, you know, a, another fabricated incident that justified intervention in c countries as far flung as Puerto Rico and Guam. And to this day, if you go to Arlington, there is the, it's a total lie. I mean, there is a, the monument to the sailors who died, tragic as it was on the mm -hmm. USS Maine, but it's still m held out to have been a terrorist attack when it was not. Right, and on that basis, the United States invaded the Philippines and waged a series of colonial wars where hundreds of thousands of Filipino people were killed. Mm -hmm. So you and I, and people who are familiar with this legacy, may look the at Huck things rebellion. one way, right? But we should be aware that you know, a very dangerous uh, jingoistic climate is being created uh, mm -hmm. from Obama on down to Anderson Cooper that keeping a honest guy, uh, that we are on the side, we, uh, we are supposed to identify with the interests of our government, are on the side of the good guys in Ukraine. That this was a democratic uprising, although as you pointed out, some of these forces you know, actually are overtly pro-Nazi, but never mind, you know, they're yeah. a democratic uprising. And that Whoa, some country you, has... That, you're, you're saying that <laughs> as facetiously. I yeah. am. I'm <laughs> trying, you know, this is what's being pumped out there. Yes. Whoa, another country had the gall to violate the territory integrity of Ukraine. Mm -hmm. If you dial back a few weeks, uh, U.S. diplomats were caught in a leaked phone conversation, essentially walking through orchestrating a regime change in, mm -hmm. in Ukraine, who they wanted to be the new president, who they didn't think would be an appropriate president, how to have the UN appear to be the force mm -hmm. mediating all this. So there's a, a very dangerous gap between people's I'm talking about mm -hmm. the not, you, watchers of your yeah, show, it, but watchers of the mass well, media and reality. Jerk, I mean, the knee-jerk reaction for, for progressives mm -hmm. in New York might be, for some at least, to immediately throw down with the, with, on the Russian side. Mm -hmm. Considering the U.S. involvement, the involvement of the Nazis, as bad as the Russians might be, the, the, the American left has a long history of throwing down with the Russians, even with their 
misgivings about some of the things that are going on there mm-hmm. because of the fear that you know these more industrialized countries were going to invade them and as happened and tear them apart and, mm-hmm. uh, and that somehow their weakness or their relative weakness to the United States uh, means that we should support them in these kind of situations. Well, I mean, I can understand that poll again yeah. among people I, who I've understand this. that and yeah. also your observations about the repressive nature of Putin and the, and the Russian regime are, are accurate perceptions. But I think if we are not going to get caught in a never-ending spiral of lesser of two evils, well, Russia is kind of a smaller imperialist country. But they are an imperialist country. Here's where I wanted to just... Uh, I just think this pithy explanation of imperialism, this is from basics, uh, from the talks and writings of Bob Avakian, the leader of the Revolutionary Communist Party. And you can find out all about him at revcom.us. But Rev, Rev, R-E-V-C-O-M dot U-S. Thank you. You got the dot U-S. Right. For a, 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 an organization has communists in their name. Revcom, mm-hmm. Revolutionary Communist dot United States. Yeah, but we say it us. Not <laughs> <laughs> we, we want to no, acknowledge see, I the knew U.S. There was a story there. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, so this quote is, and I think this is worth reflecting on, in, including mm-hmm. in relation to who is the only alternative to look for the, you know, because you could even, if you want to keep going down the spiral, the capital's ruling class in the Ukraine is even lower on the pecking order, so mm-hmm. do we side with them. Anyway, yeah, right. so th- this quote says, and this is uh, Basics, uh, chapter one, quote six, imperialism means huge monopolies and financial institutions controlling the economies and the political systems and the lives of people, not just in one country, but all over the world. Imperialism means parasitic exploiters, who oppress hundreds of millions of people and condemn them to untold misery, parasitic financiers who can cause millions to starve just by pressing a computer key and thereby shifting vast amounts of wealth from one place to another. Imperialism means war. War to put down the resistance and rebellion of the oppressed and war between rival imperialist states. It means the leaders of these states can condemn humanity to unbelievable devastation, perhaps even total annihilation with the push of a button. Imperialism is capitalism at the stage where its basic contradictions have been raised to tremendously explosive levels, but imperialism also means that there will be revolution, the oppressed rising up to overthrow their exploiters and tormentors, and that this revolution will be a worldwide struggle to sweep away the global monster imperialism. So what I'm arguing is rather than kind of get caught in who shot John, I mean, if you listen to the legal arguments, so Mm -hmm. to speak, that Putin makes, I mean, the U.S. was knee deep in in Ukraine. And, you know, one of the things we were talking about earlier is that Ukraine has its own ruling class Mm -hmm. and they have this offer from Europe of aid, which, as they looked at it, was really, and I think real accurately so, was a Greece-style austerity measures. Mm -hmm. Putin's making his offer. But from what kind of, you know, motives is is he really in in the Russian rule? So Putin's offering money. money. Putin's offering, Russia's offering more money. Well, how do they finance this? We have a map behind us, and, uh, (laughs) well, you can see it on the screen. It's fine. And uh, and it has... um, the red lines, the squiggly red lines, mm-hmm. are the natural gas pipelines. You can see it says gas pipelines, and the dotted lines are proposed gas pipelines. And uh, where it says Ukraine in the sort of like light, uh, you know, yellowish color there on the mm-hmm. bottom, and then you see sticking out into the blue where it says South Stream. That's a proposed pipeline. Mm-hmm. That peninsula sticking out is Crimea. And let me. It's actually better. I can. Here, there it is. There's Crimea, right mm-hmm. there, okay? And there, this is where the Russian army has moved in and are claiming that this is actually part of Russia. This is Ukraine. Tends to be, according to at least what they're saying, more pro-Russian on this side, pro-Western on that side. All right, now, um, the red lines are the gas. Now, I have a friend, we've, we've done a lot of shows about fracking here, you know, mm-hmm. and fracking is uh, the process of uh, a very environmentally destructive process, no matter what the advertisements on TV say, yeah. of, of putting chemicals and water into the earth to crack open the earth mm-hmm. and to allow the captured 
natural gas pockets to be released. And there's tremendous problems with the chemicals that they use, the pollution of the water, with the effect it has on the earth above you by weakening it and fracturing it. Um, there's the nature of the radon is mixed with the gas, meaning it's a high radioactive content that you're bringing into your home when you purchase this gas. And Russia's and America are competing with each other as mm -hmm. the largest suppliers of gas in the world. They are actually, from what I understand, even shooting for even having a greater uh, export of natural, of, of gas and oil than, and coal than Saudi Arabia and some of these other countries mm -hmm. that we've traditionally thought of as the great exporters. So um, I'm thinking, when I see this, my friend was looking at this, says that you know this is all being done to promote fracking, mm -hmm. that both countries want to sell, the United States now being an energy exporter mm -hmm. in this new era of austerity and energy that we were living in the last mm -hmm. period is giving uh, is allegedly, relatively, relatively speaking, speaking yeah, we're okay. having a, a supply now, an oversupply mm -hmm. of gas, and they want to be able to send it to Europe. And Russia is already there with these pipelines. Ukraine controls the tap, it looks like. The pipelines pass through Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I don't know. It's, uh, is this a situation where, where it's almost like both countries are just pumping up the value of uh, the market for natural gas in order to sell as much as they can now that they've discovered they have these valuable resources, not thinking of using them in any sort of planned, organized, environmental way to actually mm -hmm. help the world, but to hurt the world even more by just selling it to the highest bidder as fast as possible? Well, I think you and your friend or... Right. Friend. <laughs> and I sort of, well, my the, friend brought this the, up to me, yeah, the, and I yeah. didn't think of it myself, yeah, but then yeah. I agreed with it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think, you know, I think it's correct to uh, look at the linkages between fracking yeah. and what's going on here, but I think the, you know, the problem's more deep-rooted. If you go back to the earliest, you know, beginnings of imperialism, control of oil yeah. for production, for profit, and for military, yeah. you know, modern militaries run on gas and oil, and he who you know, hold the chokehold on the supply of gas and oil. Mm -hmm. um, and Ukraine, I'm not, sh in a, yeah, they're a choke point, but mainly it's Russia that's, that, yeah. you know, can turn the spigot off, on and off. Uh, I may have the statistic wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's in this ballpark that Germany gets 30% of their natural gas. Mm -hmm. This is Europe's economic powerhouse. This is the country mm -hmm. that gets, sits atop yes. European capitalism and imperialism. Right. You know, there was, I don't know if we can use, I won't use the F word since we're on TV, but there was this, uh, you know, kind of this, <laughs> this, leaked, this leaked exchange where, where a U.S. diplomat was caught saying, you know, F the EU, that yeah. e they did use the acronym EU, right. European Union. So, you know, this gives us a clue as to the kinds of tensions, even within the U.S. bloc, where Germany may have its own interests in terms of, you know, maintaining the, the flow right. of Russian gas and may not feel as compelled as the United States to throw down in terms of seeing their right. global empire challenged. If you, uh, you know, another connection that I would just point to is, you know, you've got a similar standoff in Syria mm -hmm. where, you know, the United States once again is supporting forces of democracy, which yes. your users will, your listeners will appreciate the irony there. They're a motley collection of some of the more right. draconian repressive forces on earth. Uh, but there are, mm -hmm. you know, grassroots forces. Right. Uh, and of course, w the United States in, in funding them and including through Saudi Arabia wasn't interfering mm. in the you know territorial integrity of Syria but you do have you know this same global clash so and you have the potential for the emergence of a block of countries Russia China you know, Iran yeah. if Ukraine was moved firmly into the Russian camp this would begin to pose a challenge to that U.S. empire. And we were talking about the U.S. military budget being, what is it, the, larger than the right. t next 10 largest countries, right, including you know, Russia, Russia, China, so it's, it's all massive, combined. Right, it's yeah. massive, right? I mean, a lot, most people think of, if you talk about China as a powerhouse, but really it's the Chinese economy is about equal to the state of California. And the economy? The size of the economy is about the state of California, 30 million people in America, and uh, well, California's the richest state. Uh, that's my last understanding, at least, of what I saw. I could have changed mm -hmm. in time. But uh, it's, it's still a, a really a fraction of the American economy. And the Russian economy is a larger fraction, but still itself a fraction of the American economy. 
I, I think the Chinese is larger, but if you, you know, if you were put yourself in the shoes of the people taking responsibility for maintaining the U.S. empire, mm -hmm. you have to be, you know, so, uh, the, the, the analogy to a mob boss always, uh -huh. you know, occurs to me. If somebody shows up on a corner you control and they're selling drugs or whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, that sends a message that you're soft and that other people can start well, doing this kind of thing. I, I still think of the United States as a superpower, as the lone superpower. Yeah. I don't, are, are, is that changing? Are you, are, are, are you sort of implying or implicating that the U.S. might be losing its grip as the lone superpower? That it might I, be think that's, I think a multi, that's a question that you know, needs to be... Like a World be, War I know. situation where you had mm -hmm. multiple countries of relative equality that were, and, and the war that broke out had numerous poles, mm -hmm. especially World War I. World War II is a little more polarized. Mm -hmm. And the world seems to have, since the fall of the Soviet Union, 89, 91, been the America's oyster. Is that coming mm -hmm. to an end, in your opinion? I, I think there are serious challenges to it. That, and, and again, you know, history doesn't repeat itself, and there are, you know, it's, just, it's uh, there's a lot in flux. It's a very tense situation. Mm -hmm. And this brings us back to, I mean, when we were talking about this yesterday, someone just expressed real, genuine anger and outrage, and I felt it. You know, she said, well, you know, I, here we go again, you know, two nuclear armed yeah. powers, stories about, you know, more lies to justify U.S. Mm -hmm. intervention, and the potential for something like an accident. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, what, what one of these little bases, some Ukrainian nationalist and some Russian commanders start shooting at each other. What's mm -hmm. going to develop? We have to appreciate the danger in the situation. This is ominous. Well, could the U.S. be drawn in to actually deploy troops in, in Ukraine within you know, the I, borders of what used to be the Soviet Union? I don't, you know, I don't see that as a likely next step, but, you know, if you look at Syria, for example, or what happened in Georgia a couple of years ago, yeah. there are proxies, there's a, there's, advi you know, the infamous Advisors. U.S. advisor, right, right? Uh, and all these kinds of things. But I think, you know, given what you've told me about your audience, we have a responsibility to help you know, shake the American people out of the way they're being brainwashed to look at things. Every time you see people in the streets, people, that is not a necessarily a good thing. Mm -hmm. You know, 30 million people demanded the end of, uh, maybe it was exaggerated, but that was, it was a lot of people demanded the fall of the Morsi government in Egypt and look what they got. Right. So, you know, you can't judge a situation by whether or not Anderson Cooper is down there interviewing some guy but. By the way, carrying out actions that if they would have been done at an Occupy protest would have gotten people arrested on Absolutely. very serious charges. No, I've seen nothing that I've seen nothing in any of the footage of what's gone on in Ukraine in the last week that I did not see at one time or another in, in Occupy, either in New York or in Oakland or various other places. Nothing, including what happened during the Olympics when they were because I saw them using the metal tipped. You're talking about in terms of repression. Yes, in terms of repression. Yeah. I saw the police in New York use the metal-tipped whips mm -hmm. that they have. They go, they carry them on their belt, and they hit a button, and a spring-loaded metal whip pops out. And I saw them, wet, mm -hmm. you know, trying to get people to let go of a, of a thing by hitting them on the knuckles with it as hard mm -hmm. as they could. To me, that I, when I saw it, I was shocked. I filmed some of it. It was brutal. Yeah, the brutality uh, was uh, was pretty widespread and pretty deep mm -hmm. during Occupy. It, it shocked me because although I felt the government was capable of it, yeah. Kent State and Jackson State yeah, are exhibits yeah. of that. It took me by surprise that we're getting back to those days so quick. It was like a quick move back to the days when uh, when it seemed like the country was more polarized and and made me think, is the, is, is the center collapsing Well, I think, I think that's a very, very important question. And this is, you know, one thing I would suggest. We've got kind of a three things you can do at RevCom. One is to take the exposure and analysis we've got there, tweet it, spread it around. Yes, that's revcoweb dot us. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, the, we've got postables uh, like the the poster that I held up. Of, yeah, this hold is it again. the yeah yeah. Let's 
This, you know, this is the kind of thing people need to understand when the United States talks about going around the world and spreading freedom and democracy and respecting the territorial integrity of other countries. This is, this, this is a U.S. soldier in Haiti not that long ago. This was 1994. Um, so people, you know, people need to be sounding the alarm, but also I think, you know, you're onto something very important when you bring up this polarization thing. Uh, we were, I was telling you the other day about how, for myself, I got pulled into political life around the Vietnam War and I supported the war. Yeah. I, and I went yeah, to yeah. teach-ins and I came to see that not only was the war wrong, but the whole system was wrong and that had a lot to do with why I'm here today. Mm -hmm. But you know, these are moments when people can come to see that the system is intolerable. And one of the other things that we have listed at Revcom.us is check out the strategy for revolution from the Revolutionary Communist Party because these tense moments mm -hmm. are, you know, you, you look at history, uh, what, you know, there's, there's often an association between aggressive imperialist wars and well, revolution. I'm not predicting it. I'm not calling for it today, but I'm saying there's a relationship between how people come to see the nature of the system. But we have a lot of work to do. Let's face Before it. Before the end of the United States, being a wealthy, you know, being a highly polarized country, mm -hmm. but still a very large upper middle class, mm -hmm. stabilizing influence. Some would say that's a good thing. It would be worse if it wasn't such a large stabilizing influence in the United States that has sort of dampened revolutionary upsurges in the past. I mean, is there a way, can the United States actually, you know, relive it, the glory days of 1776, you know, the Battle of Gettysburg, you know, to, to march out and to actually change the world for the better, Americans rising up in that way, you know, to reach back into their history and find that, you know, the, the 1930s, the 1960s to a smaller degree, you know. Well, it's you interesting. Know, the, the people yeah. who risked their lives, you yeah. know, fighting the Nazis, although half of them, we're fighting the Japanese for no reason yeah, at all, yeah. <laughs> you know, but, you know, nothing ever comes clean, you know, in this world, it seems. Well, it's a, I, the, I saw some spray paint on my way into the studio that said, restore the dignity of the United States. And I thought, now, would that be going back to the genocide against the Native Americans, which set the right. stage for, don't forget, in the Declaration, is it the Declaration of Independence? I think, the, you know, there's the accusation that the King of England incited Indians to right. rebel Absolutely. against the settlers. So that, you know, wasn't, it wasn't such a what you say, right. such a righteous uh, revolution. Or do we go back to slavery, on, mm -hmm. on which you know the foundation of this country was built? Or do we go back to Jim Crow, mm -hmm. or even the glory days of the New Deal, which institutionalized mm -hmm. uh, segregation in the North? But there was a spirit uh, reaching back because mm -hmm. I don't want to. I want to say the United States is not, in its entirety, the evil empire that might its government might. You know, mm -hmm. it's funny. The United States, Ronald Reagan once called. Russia, no. the Soviet Union, the evil empire, and which always begs the question, the person doing the calling, <laughs> you know, no. uh, who is the evil empire or the axis of evil, as they said later on, right? But um, uh, the American people have done good things. I mean, the Vietnam War, they stood up by the millions of mm -hmm. protests. I mean, millions, I mean, we'd still have segregation in Jim Crow. Mm -hmm. Millions of people didn't stand together against that. Uh, it doesn't forgive these crimes. Yeah. However, we had a ban the bond movement, we had a peace movement, very powerful, contributing to uh, at least some sort of detente, you know, even if that wasn't a solution to the problem. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, it doesn't seem to me that, you know, that everything that comes out of America is bad. Some good things have come out. Would well, you, you know, if you're speaking of that trajectory, I mean, to me, yeah. I think the, the experience of the late 1960s and the impact the Black Panther Party had of of mm -hmm. putting revolution on the map and really calling out the system, you know, through a, a myriad of ways uh, is is something that we look to and, and learn from. Mm -hmm. Now they were both were crushed with repression yeah. and ran up against some low limitations of their understanding. I mean, they were crushed so young and so quickly out of the gate. But I, th I would make a distinction between you know, the interests of humanity and the interests of the U.S. government. And that's, you know, and, and, and the best of what has come forward, Muhammad Ali, you know, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's, 
shameful. Now, he's a Cadillac ad. I don't know if you've seen well, it. Yeah, it but has, I, yeah. has co-opted Muhammad Ali. This is the guy who said, you know, no Vietnamese ever called me the N-word and went to prison course, for refusing yes. to go to Vietnam. So there was a spirit then. And what did Malcolm X say? I'm not an American and no. I've got some I got a whiff of it during what. Occupy, didn't I? It was a whiff of, of spe that spirit coming, coming to the fore during Occupy. And, and it was surprising to all of us. I mean, mm -hmm. I think to everybody, when we saw such a large group of people appear, Mm -hmm. And sit, and then refused to leave. It was a hard, it was a it was a, it, those were heady days. Uh, you know, I, I would hope that it would have lasted longer, but the you know our mayor, our dear mayor at the mm -hmm. time, made it his point to crush it, to to stamp out this mm -hmm. this flower before it could grab hold. And I'm glad he's no longer the mayor for that reason, but and, and one of many reasons. Well, I think we're on an interesting thread here, which is that as that happens. People, you know, there's nothing good about the tradition of America. Now, rebellion mm -hmm. against America, including within this country, you know, right. from the slave rebellions to right. to much more John Brown, modern maybe. things. Yeah, yeah. and uh, uh, Emma Denmark Goldman, Jack Reed, uh, 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 so the that Fighting it, Communist Party of the six of the thirties. You know, when they really stood for something. You know, the the uh, the folks who uh, you know fought the not who went to the Abraham Lincoln Brigade and went to Spain. You know, a lot of things like that that are, that have helped me. That really kept mm -hmm. kept me feel the hope. Was that the uh, I would think I live in this consumer oriented society, death society, where everything is just going down the tubes, and we're going to just imperial become the new Roman Empire and and die in our own. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, food and, uh, you know, eating and vomiting and vomitoriums and all of that, you know. Well, the, the, new, the new Roman American Empire decadence. does, does it? Yeah, that, yeah. I, I, parasitism. We, we have a minute and a half, by the way, so. Well, I think in this crisis Alan in the Goodman Ukraine. Is joining us from Revolution Books and from Revcom.us, R-E-V-C-O-M.us, you can see on his shirt. And we're talking about, well, we started talking about Ukraine, about fracking and gas and, the uh, growing uh, division between the United States and Russia, um, and what that means, the promise of it, the threat of it, and we're coming out to the last minute, so summarizing. Well, I, I think the, the basic message is that people are being lied to on a massive scale. It's a very dangerous situation because there's kind of a hair trigger confrontation between imperialist powers concentrated in the Ukraine, but in other parts of the world as well, and we really have to get people to stop thinking like Americans and start thinking like humanity, starting from humanity as a whole and looking for the truth, bringing it out. Mm -hmm. You'll find resources for all of this at revcom.us. Okay, that's great. And uh, and revolutionary work. Uh, re I'm sorry, Revolution the, newspaper. Revolution newspaper. Right. I'm sorry. Uh, God, you know, I've been reading that paper for so many years. I got all the names mm -hmm. in my head. And uh, and also, uh, world can't wait. Right. Uh, they're doing very important work right, as well. I, yeah, yeah, I would I, expect I read a lot they of will be opposing the, yeah. you know, war moves. They, right. they have been. Right, great. All right, so uh, thank you for joining us. And uh, any last words you'd like to, we have 20 seconds left. <laughs> well, so. I, I think, you know, people do have to, those of, those of you listening to the show do need to take responsibility. Step out, expose these lies. You'll find a lot of resources at revcom.us to help you do that. Thank you very much, and we'll see you. Great.